Today I'm going to show you how to use a few of your Silhouette Studio tools in the software to be able to create your own unique designs such as this one on the screen. I am going to first just go over to a new design mat and then I'm going to choose the text style tool on the left hand side. Click into my design mat, it's going to give me a text cursor. I'm just going to type out a capital B. I'm going to recreate the design that you saw on the other page. Anytime I'm working with text, I am always making a copy and I'm going to move that off of my design mat so I have an original. Once you change text in any way, such as convert to path or welding, it is no longer considered editable text. So you want to make sure to have an original copy in case you have to start over. So you can do that by right clicking, choosing copy paste, control C, control V, duplicate, or my favorite shortcut is to hold down the alt key on my keyboard and when you do you can see that the cursor changes to a plus sign and then i left click and drag a copy off to the side of the in the holding area i'm going to go back to my original and i'm going to fill it with color this is just to get a visual on the screen and it doesn't mean anything unless you're printing we can go ahead and enlarge this a little bit and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to choose my font style so the first font style that I want to choose, if I click on it once to select it, I can go over to my text style panel on the right side. And you want to give this a couple of minutes to open up when you first open your text style panel, all of your fonts load into the software. So sometimes it just depends on how many fonts you have. Um, I have about 1,200 fonts installed, and I only know that because I had to transfer them to a new computer recently. So your recently used fonts will show up right here, and you can see, so the two fonts I'm going to be working with today is called LW, which is the designer's name, so it's a Lori Whitlock font, and Game Day is the first font. So I'm going to just click on that, and it's going to change it to the current font style that I have chosen. You can see I have excess space above and below my text. And this is because since it's still text, it has to consider every single character that is in this font file. So if there are any special characters or flourishes or glyphs, anything like that in this font file, it has to account for those. Uh, it also has to account for things like G's and J's and um, things, the letters Y that, that hang down underneath, and so you have access space here. I made a copy of this, so if you want to make a copy of it, again, with your current text style, that's always a good idea to have extra copies. This is still my original, so I can edit it and change it. Here, I want to make this a little more accurate. If I right-click on it, I can choose Convert to Path. It is going to take it out of editable text mode and it is now going to be considered a vector design. So now this is more accurate in the sizing and the measurements, but it is no longer editable text. Anytime you change it, such as converting to path, welding, compound path, or ungrouping when you were working with text, it's going to change it from editable text and make it into a vector design. Now that I have it, I can just grab the little bounding boxes in the corners and I can resize that to the size that I kind of want to. We can always adjust that later as we get going. So for my next text, I'm going to click on the text tool on the left hand side again. I'm just going to click my cursor over here in the holding space and I'm just going to type out Bobcats. Click off of it to deselect it. And if I click back on it one time, I can go ahead and give it a color just so that it's easier to work with. Now, this one, with it selected one time, so you click off of it to deselect it, click back on it once just to select it, I can choose my text style panel again, and then I'm going to choose the second font style that I want to use. So this time I'm using an All Stars font. And there will be links to both of these fonts that where they can be found in the description below. I can just kind of enlarge that a little bit. The first thing I want to do, you can see here that 
the red cut lines are going through each of these letters. So this font style is kind of desi designed to be welded together, but we want to make a copy first. So we always want to have that original that we can go back to. So I'm going to hold my alt key down again. I get that plus sign on my cursor and I'm going to drag a copy away. Now I can go ahead and I can right click on this and I can choose weld. When I do that, it's going to weld the overlapping letters, but you will also notice here that it now has a selection box around the B by itself and around everything else that was welded together. So if it's not overlapping, it's now considered its own separate piece of the design. So I want to right click on it and choose group. So it'll all move as one object, or you can use the keyboard shortcut that is control G for grouping. So I'm just going to bring this over here onto my design mat. And then what I can do to create this design is I'm going to use the transform panel on the right hand side. And the rotate is your third tab at the top. I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And then I can use the corner bounding boxes and I can increase the size of this to whatever the desire I, I think looks well. It's going to be a personal preference on the size that you think and depending on what letters you're working with or what the name you're working with, all of them can be different. So it's not going to be a one size fits all. I can't tell you that it's going to be one inch from the edge of the B letter. Um, it's just going to be whatever you think looks best. Once I have the size that I think is good, I am going to left click, drag my mouse across both of the B and the name, and it's going to select both of those at the same time. I'm going to use my align tools in the top quick access toolbar, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the align and I want to choose the align middle and you don't see anything happen on the screen so I'm going to move these a little bit farther apart but if I left click and select them again and choose my align middle it's going to then uh, line it up so that the middle of my text my word is now aligned with the middle of my letter and this is one reason that I converted it to path is because it takes away that excess space around the edges and it gives me mo a more accurate sizing and a more accurate uh, dimension for being able to align the design together. So now what we're going to do is click off of it to deselect it, click back on just your word, and we're going to use the offset panel on the right hand side. Looks like a star with an outline around it. With the Bobcat selected, I'm going to choose offset. And it's going to put a red line offset to the default distance of 0.125 inches. Now, you can play with this and you can test it and see what offset works well for your design. I'm going to leave this at the 0.125 because I liked it that way. And I'm going to click apply. When I do, you can see that it applies that offset to everything. When you apply an offset, it's going to also weld the offset together where there was overlapping lines. So this is a good thing for us. It also, once you hit apply, the offset is now what is selected on your screen. So if I hold my shift key down and I click on my letter B, that will select both my offset and my B. I'm going to use the modify panel on the right hand side and then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to choose subtract and when I do that it's going to subtract that offset out of my B in the background. When I do the offset and subtract it you can see that all of these little pieces are now separated so we want to then right click and choose group or control G so that we make sure that all those little pieces are now going to move as one piece. So if I move my B, all those little pieces that you see 
stay together and move as one piece. I'm gonna click undo to move that back. Undo is one of your best friends in the software. And now I have created this design. So I have my B that has the Bobcats cut out from around it. I'm gonna undo that and I have my name that is going to be placed inside of this offset. Depending on the materials that you are cutting would depend on how you would cut this. So if I'm going to cut it out of heat transfer vinyl, which is what I did, I'm also going to have to cut these separately, two different colors. It's gonna cut two separate colors out. So I am going to move one of these off my mat, going to right click on my B, and I'm going to choose flip horizontally. Since it's heat transfer vinyl, typically you are going to be cutting through the back side of it unless you have patterned heat transfer vinyl, that could be different. So I'm going to flip or mirror my image before I send this to cut. With the Bobcats, even though my text is vertical, now that I have my text done, I can go ahead and go back to the transform panel on the right hand side, the rotate, and I could rotate this back and then I'm going to flip it or mirror the image. Flip horizontal and mirror are the same thing. Once my B is cut, I can move that off my mat and I can place my Bobcats onto the mat to cut it. And then you're going to press them onto your shirt separately. Hopefully that gives you some ideas of designs that you could make and create on your own. Here are a couple other examples of designs that I created. I have not cut these yet, but I will show a finished photo of the Bobcats here in just a second. So I did a letter H and I followed the same exact steps. We use the letter H with the same fonts. This is the Lori Whitlock game day. And then the Husky is the All Stars font. One more that I created is a letter S with the game day font and the Spartans with the All Stars font. So it really just depends on your letter that you're working with and the word that you're working with. Each one is gonna be a little bit different. There is no set exact amount or spacing. You can see here, my Spartans is closer to the edge of my S than my Bobcats file was. It really is just gonna depend on the letters you're working with and the name you're working with. You can also see here the way I placed the Husky, the Y actually cuts out the bottom here and hangs down. So it's really just a matter of you have the capabilities in the Silhouette software to be able to create your own designs, make them unique to yourself and to what you're creating. I really love how this shirt turned out and I think it's one of my favorites at the moment. Thanks for joining me today. You'll find more information on this post and a tutorial at my blog at silhouette-secrets.com. Thank you.